All right, welcome to another edition of uh, Pastor on Safari in the middle of the coronavirus devotion. Uh, I am excited to be here. I'm Pastor Johnny, and thanks for joining us. Uh, if this is your first time, we love you. Visit discoverfamilychurch.com. We'd love to have you there. Uh, we uh, uh, Today, I want, I want to tell a story about this guy right behind me, if you can see him. His name is the Mantis Shrimp, and I've told the stories about him before, and I just love it, and people ask me always to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it here. Mantis Shrimp is one of the coolest animals in the world because it uses what God gave it. Mantis shrimp are, and, and you, I've caught them before. You can catch them in the Gulf. Uh, you can catch them in the in the in the Atlantic, uh, randomly. I've, I've I've hooked them before, uh, but they're scary. Uh, they they they're they're huge shrimp. They six to twelve inches long, uh, and, and it, it's huge for a shrimp, but but tiny for an animal, especially when it comes to the ocean. Because I was out fishing last week, and a, a pod of whales came. We were about. 30, 40 miles offshore, and a pod of whales came up next to the boat, and we followed them around for about half an hour. And I got this great video of these these whales surfacing and spraying water, and you see the size of the scope of these animals, and then you think of a mantis shrimp, and it's like this long, and it's a nothing of an animal, but but the, but it's got some really cool stuff to it. Okay, science is you know science. I'll tell you, you know, like we have rods and cones in our eyes. You know, rods see light and motion, cones see color. Uh, dogs have two cones. They have red and green. You know, they're not colorblind. They don't see black and white. They see red and green really well. They, they, but, but we have three cones. We have red, green, blue, and it makes up the the spectrum of colors that we see are all mixtures of red, green, and blue. A butterfly has five cones in its eyes, so it sees red, green, and blue. But it also sees two colors that we don't know what they are. We don't know what they look like, so it sees colors that we have no comprehension for or idea of, uh, which is crazy. So dogs have two, we have three, butterfly have five, mantis shrimp have 16 cones. That means they have 13 other spectrums of color to mix with more than we do. And if you think of every color you can imagine in the world, imagine you know millions upon millions times that. That's what, what they get to see, the brilliance of color that they get to see. Uh, you know, so things that we think are one color, they see it as a totally different color because they see a, a whole nother spectrum that we don't see. Uh, and, and you would think that, you know, because a lot of times whenever animals are smaller in the ocean, they try to hide themselves. They, they, they try to, 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 to blend in. And you would think that, that, that how bright these things are and the view they have would um, make them a target. But, but that beauty allows them something, uh, it gives them an awesome skill. If you look at his little arms up there, he punches. They're, they're, they're raptoidal, rap, raptoidal appendages, um, and, 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 and he, he punches things. And the punch is like nothing else on our planet at all. Um, it, when they punch, it, it, what it is is there's little springs that they pull back and it locks in place. And when they release it, it just shoots that spring out and punches. And it punches uh, faster than a 22 caliber bullet leaves a gun. Uh, it, it, re it releases 1,500 newtons of force. And to put that into perspective, if I could accelerate my arm and throw at just one-tenth of the speed that, that, that a mantis does per size, like if I sized up a mantis to be Johnny-sized, and I could move my arm at just one-tenth of its speed, then if I went to throw a baseball, I would put it into the orbit. I would put it in orbit outside of our atmosphere. Just unbelievable power that these things punch with, and, 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 and it's it's incredible when they when they punch. The water around their arms flash boils, and it just you see like bubbles shoot up, and it, they're not even close to the surface, but it's just they're flash boiling the water around them. And, and, and not only that, the shock wave alone of their punch underwater, even when they don't touch the animal they're fighting, the shock wave alone will stun and, and, and kill many of the small animals they're going after. And, and what's, it's really creepy, like you watch the videos, they, like they, they, they dismember and, and eat these animals by just punching them to death. Um, a shrimp, a six inch little shrimp. But they, they use what God gave them. And I say all that to say this today, that, that, that God has given you something. And you might be sitting at home thinking, I don't have anything to offer. 
I'm not, I'm not worthy. I don't have anything that's worth anything. I'm here to tell you, first off, you do. And yes, you have plenty to offer. The, the truth is, is that, is that I believe, and at Discover Family Church, we believe that you're a 10 at something. Everybody is a 10 at something. So God made you specifically. None of you are going to sit here and tell me that God makes mistakes. You think God is perfect. He is, he is holy. He is righteous. He doesn't make mistakes. So quit saying that you're the mistake that he made. He made you on purpose and with the purpose. It says that before you were formed in his womb, in your mother's womb, that he knew you, that he had a plan for you. He already given you the gifts you need and the tools you needed to change the world. We look throughout all of history and you see the people that have changed the world and they did it with uh, seemingly nothing. You look at guys like Alexander the Great. He, he led troops into battle when he was 16 years old. Within 10 years, he became the king of the largest empire in known history. Like, it's unbelievable. Uh, you look at a guy like Genghis Khan. He fought in his early teens. By 25 years old, he had established his giant empire across Asia. Uh, Gustav Adolphus, he commanded men at 16. And, and, and the Swedish parliament were so, um, so impressed by him that they changed the law and allowed him to become the king when he was only 17 years old because he was that impressive. You just heard of Joan of Arc, right? Joan of Arc, we, there's a lot of movies about her and stories. You know that she, she died before she even turned 20. She was a woman at a time when women were considered less than. And she was a peasant, which means she had no money, which means she was less than, less than. She was like the worst of the worst. And, and yet she handed the king of France his crown. She changed the history of our planet, and she died before she even reached the age of 20. God has given each of you a gift, and it's just whether you're willing to step out and do it. Listen to this, the story from 1 Chronicles. I love this story. It's the story of Benaiah, and, and, and I love it. It says, uh, And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was a valiant man of Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two heroes of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. He went down in the pit to kill a lion. He didn't have to go into a pit. The lion was already in the pit, but he went down there to take care of business. Uh, and then it says, He struck down an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits tall, real tall guy. Uh, it's just a big guy. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand like a weaver's beam. But Benaiah went down to him with a staff. And he snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and won a name beside the three mighty men. See, there were things that were meant to hurt him. And there were tools that he didn't know he had. But he went after what he knew God wanted him to do. And I'm telling you this to say this, is that God has called you to do something. Don't sit back and say, well, I need to get these tools first, or I need to do this first. No, you don't. God gave you the plan. He knows what's happening. He knows what's happening in the world right now. And then what's happening in the world right now is no excuse for you to say, well, I'm going to wait to do something about what the plan God's given my heart. No, just go for it. He knew all this was going to happen, and so what did he do? What did we do at the church? We, we started doing devotionals every day and posting online and trying to reach out with virtual small groups to set up different ways to connect. Why? But because we know that God, the, the, the message that God has given us is the message for right now. It's not for once the coronavirus goes away. And the, and the plan that God has put in your heart is not for once this is all done. It's not for once you learn or become a doctorate in theology. It's for right now. So go after the enemy, snatch that spear out of his hand, and use it against him to change the world. Use the gifts that God gave you, like the mantis shrimp. Just say, you know what, I don't care if people think I'm little, I don't care if people think I'm not smart enough, I'm gonna change the world for Jesus because I love him, and Jesus loves you, and so do I. Guys, go out and change the world this week. Have a great day, I will see you soon.